Harrison, Chu, yeah. and then myself because charter ordinances have to be re approved by a two thirds margin. Us four is a two thirds margin. So we, we actually had consensus to move forward to study for a, a BPU by charter ordinance. Mm -hmm. So that's how we got to this particular work session item uh, today. There's been a number of things that, uh, that I included uh, for discussion, uh, including uh, Charter Ordinance Number One uh, from McPherson, Kansas, as well as uh, which which is a uh, Charter Ordinance that that dictates the use of utility revenues, mm -hmm. and Charter Ordinance Number Five, which establishes their Board of Public Utilities. Uh, and we've talked about McPherson a lot, and and not only has McPherson established this Charter Ordinance. Uh, a while back, but they have amended it on half a dozen times. Uh, so uh, this isn't something that they just established in 1969 and then forgot about. They have worked on it throughout intervening years. Uh, I also suggested everybody get a, a copy of 2296 again. Mm -hmm. Uh, just so that we have uh, something that we can compare and contrast what we currently are working with and also uh, Ryan Dink's memo uh, which explains some of the uh, uh, conflicts and nonconformity uh, with uh, the charter ordinance from uh, McPherson and I, I guess just to lead off conversation and maybe some of this, some of you are, are seeing this for the first time, but uh, uh, the Charter Ordinance Number One, which talks about use of utility revenue, uh, it starts with explaining uh, what they're going to do and the state statutes uh, that they are exempting themselves from, and then it talks about disbursement of revenue. And that seems to be of uh, great concern to some folks in the community. What's what, what what's what's the concern? Uh, the disbursement of revenue from uh, the utilities. Um, over the summer, uh, as part of our budgeting process at the city, we dipped into. Uh, the uh, electric utility Gardner Energy's uh, budget for to recoup some uh, funds. Uh, I think everybody's pretty aware of what we did there as far as splitting up the uh, uh, reconnection fees and then also uh, recouping some money for uh, uh, rate adjustments to the city. But uh, I never have quite figured out how it is that, that they, they ended up doing uh, use of utility revenues before they did the ordinance that established the, uh, the Board of Public Utilities, but they did. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, you know, Section 1 just exempts them from statute, and then the rest of it involves Section 2, uh, Revenue derived by the city from the sale and consumption of water, fuel, power, light shall not be paid out or dispersed except for the purpose of operating, renewing, or extending the plant or distribution systems. And it, it goes on and continues to talk about, about uh, the use of the funds uh, the, the, that are being derived by particular funds and that they should only be used for those purposes. Now that's that's the first part of the ordinance. Now the second part, uh, Section A, which is about well, this hasn't happened in a while. Wow. <laughs> those generators are working, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think this is 
just happened since I've been sitting up here. It's been a, it's been a while. Yeah. Yeah. David Green used, used to be the guy that knew how to get those back up. I did. Hopefully he passed that information along to you, Brian. Uh, and, and actually, if, hi if history holds, that's not the first time that's going to happen this evening. Let's just keep our fingers crossed. Mm -hmm. One time you had to stand and like hold the, the, the switch. Yes. Like during the meeting. Yeah. So now the the section A uh, the the of uh, section two talking about disbursement of revenue. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> a says uh, the funds may be transferred and merged into the city general fund, revenue fund, or any other fund or funds of such city. Mm -hmm. And then section B says they may be expended for the purpose of promoting industrial development within or without the corporate limits of the city, including encouraging and assisting. It's, it's meant to be uh, promoting industrial economic development. And those two sections are really what's different from state statutes. Well, ac actually, Section A is, is, is almost verbatim identical to state yeah. statute. As far as once there's a surplus. Yes. Right? Okay. Right. But the city dictates when that surplus. There's not a line right. in there. When you say there's there. enough, then you can do with it at right. that point. So, uh, have you, did you send this out or did we? Does anyone have seen no, this before? We, I've seen it before just because <laughs> it has been distributed. To who? I mean, I mean it's been distributed to other counts. I mean, this McPherson step was included, I think, in one of our or was it at the, packets a long time ago. Was yeah. it a BPU meeting, perhaps? And we looked at it when we did the BPU step. But this McPherson step, I think, has been provided mm -hmm. as yeah. an example. I don't know if it's all this stuff. But I don't think I've had McPherson since yeah. I've been on the board, but I've, I've been able to go and look at it because it's come up in conversation quite a yeah. bit. So this is the first time I've seen it like this. Here. I mean, yeah. I've heard of it, and I've okay. it. It's been nice to have this before we. I mean, <laughs> understood. A lot of stuff here. Yeah, uh, but I, I guess that at the at the end of the day, when it comes to use of utility revenues, McPherson, which is operating almost exactly like state statute says, <coughs> except for item number B. Yep. Uh, uh, now, I, I'm not proposing that we use. Uh, surplus funds from the uh, utilities to to fund uh, uh, economic development, uh, but I'm wondering if there is a way to word a section like this in a charter ordinance that says that once the funds have a surplus, that they can be uh, the surplus amounts can be transferred to other utility funds. So uh, electric could transfer to water, water could transfer to wastewater, wastewater could transfer to electric. I, know, I don't know that that's ever going to happen. You can yeah. do that now, though, under, yeah. the, under the statute 12825D. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And the, <coughs> just maybe to help foster the conversation, from my memo, there's only three areas that um, it's my opinion that you can't charter out of, that's and that is um, compliance with Kansas budget laws, um, the uh, requirement of bond issuance that that, remain, that authority remain with the governing body, and then the authority of eminent domain mm -hmm. that uh, that is still required to be accepted by the governing body. Aside from that, uh, it's my opinion that everything else is fodder for exercise of uh, mm -hmm. home rule and charter ordinance. So. Okay. And my understanding, uh, Mr. Dank, is that from the standpoint of McPherson's charter ordinance, as far as I can tell, I think they have exempted themselves from practically every other aspect of, of, uh, of their uh, operations um, from, 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 sh from a charter, I mean, from, uh, from state statute via, via home rule. I mean, I'm looking at virtually every um, KSA that's 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 uh, listed under their char both both, uh, <coughs> both charter ordinance number one and charter ordinance number five. You mentioned all of these. 